All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Social Marketing Hour. Today, I have another, I always say this, but it's always true. I don't interview people that I don't think are very, very special. Today, I have a very, very, very special guest. This person, I go way back. She doesn't go way back with me. I go way back with her. Now, how could I say that? Well, let me just tell you a small little story as to what I'm talking about. In my church that I have been a part of for several decades now, we have a lot of uh, training films to help us improve certain areas of our lives and our ability to handle life and so on. So when I was a young teenager in the getting out of like trouble in my life and looking for help, one of the first things that I did was get myself some training and some education. And this person has been an actress for a long, long time. And she'll talk about this because she's, you know, she's proud about her age and, and where she's at at this moment in her journey as a woman. So she'll, I'll let her explain this particular process. But I used to watch her films over and over again because she's been an amazing actress for a long time. So when I saw her for the first time, Denise, you might not remember this moment, but I was starstruck with you <laughs> because I had seen your film dozens of times if not mm -hmm. hundreds of times so when i saw you it was like oh my god that <laughs> Three is Denise. whoa it's amazing so denise you also happen to be a great brand builder now uh, she is the founder of a company called in your face skincare creams and uh, she's done a great job doing this we've been watching your journey for several years and now we have the pleasure of having the opportunity to help you and your husband mm -hmm on this journey of building your brand. So Denise, welcome to the Social Marketing Hour. It's so great to have you here. Oh, oh God. I, I don't smoke a cigarette, but I just feel like having one to have right now. <laughs> it's a beautiful story. Um, yes, I, I, uh, I, I, I started off as an actress. And, um, you know, I've done from Matlock. I don't know if you've ever even heard of the show Matlock um, to CSI. It rings Monday. a bell. Yeah, yeah. Some of your listeners have, you know, if they're well into their 40s. Um, and CSI Miami, lots of TV commercials. And, um, and I was on Young and Restless for you, a couple You were of, on CSI Miami? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I know you had a vampire show also. Well, yes, I did a vampire series called Subspecies, which 30 years later from having done the, the, ser the three series of them, 30 years later, which was two months ago, I went back to uh, Eastern Europe and I did the fifth one. Crazy, crazy that I did this series at 27 years old, and then at 57, I get to go back and star in a full-length feature film. Thank goodness I have a skincare business because I didn't fear the camera close-ups. Um, but but that was that was sort of a thrill, and to to go back and to do a film at the time where there wasn't social media 30 years ago, and now there is, and I got to every day share the behind the scenes with it, and and of course keep my brand as a skincare owner involved into this whole film too. Amazing. Right. We'll talk about your brand and your process along the way. Something that you mentioned to me uh, before we started recording the podcast is, you know, you're obviously your age and yeah. how proud you are of your age. And that's yeah. something that we talked about the disagreement of this society being like, oh, you can't ask a woman about your age. Yeah. I'll, say, I'll say something about it. Tell me. I was watching your movies, your films, yeah. 22 years ago. Damn. You look exactly the same as you did on those films, <laughs> which is incredible. Nah. I sure as heck don't. <laughs> I can tell you that I was a teenager kid. I had a very different body and I have, should we say evolved? I don't know what we want to call it. I definitely look like I'm 40, right? I'm 41 years old now, That's but it's man. amazing what, what, you know, as a woman, you know, I know that we have listeners and we have people watching this video that yeah. are females that are entrepreneurs. Yeah. They want to learn marketing. We're going to talk about that today. But how do you stay so young? How do you look like this at your age right now? Oh that goodness. you can feel free to tell the audience sure. your age. Sure, sure. I'm 57. Um, good Italian genes make for a nice jaw. Um, uh, Botox once a year on my forehead, and and then just skin lotions and creams. Like I, I haven't had a facelift. I haven't done filler. Um, again, I do the Botox on the forehead once a year, and um, and. I celebrate my age because I have, and I, oh, and I don't, I don't drink booze. 
Um, I so maybe, no alcohol, no, no like, drugs, like zero, zero drugs. Um, uh, maybe maybe twice a year I've had a glass of wine, and that's only because I was semi pressured, not pressured, but it was like so social, or I'll have a sip. Um, but I started to see, you know, in my forties, a lot of my friends that were having like wine very often, their skin tone was getting a little crepier faster. Um, just cocktails. There's just in general, it weakens the skin. It dehydrates you. And so I thought, oh, okay, well, I don't, I don't have, I don't want booze, so I'm not going to do it. Um, I eat very healthy. Um, once or twice a month, yeah, I'll go to Taco Bell. I'm not very strict. I'm not super strict, but I like to make sure I get whole foods. I'm not a packaged person. Um, and I, I, yes, I eat well. And, um, but I, I do my little cheats, but they're little, like I'll have an ice cream cone from twisty treat with sprinkles. I lick it until the sprinkles are gone and then I throw it away. Wow. And I, I do little Facebook posts on how I do my little cheats in life, because if I completely deprive myself of something, then you want to binge on the other end of it. And there's, there's no fun in that game. Right. So, um, but I'm also, I, I, when I hit 49, I thought, and I was doing a lot of social media posting back then, right? Like when Facebook came out and when the iPhone got its first camera, I started making use of that on my Facebook. And more so than most of my friends because I was an actress and I didn't care being on film. Right. You were comfortable with the camera very, yes, from very, the beginning. That's right. And I didn't feel I needed to look perfect. Um, and that was before there was a front facing camera. So I had to turn it around. And I've also been a photographer. So I understood where the lens needed to be to make sure I was in frame. And I would just do videos of me renovating a, a, something I found, you know, off the street, right? I loved home renovation. I loved cooking. I loved making use of little bits of food in your refrigerator and how you could make a big meal out of nothing. So, so you want, you have one of the key ingredients, you've always had them, to success in the social media. You are, I like to describe it as a compulsive communicator. Oh gosh, yes. You know, usually compulsion, obsession, it's a, has a negative connotation. That's right. It's a good thing. Oh. You are out there communicating, you're trying to capture attention. That's right. You know you have value it to give. It gives me joy. I, I, you know, I unfortunately, I had one brother and I lost him to drugs when he was 40 and I was 37. And I just, I, my family is small. I always thought my Italian family was big until I married my Irish husband who has tons. And then I realized, oh, our family wasn't big. We were just loud. <laughs> we were just a loud family, but we weren't really big. And so I when social media came around, I found that I could increase my family. Wow. Like to me, when people are like, well, I don't know that person, so I'm not going to let them be in my, and I'm like, but, but we're all in the human race. It is social media. It's social. That's the purpose. You know, and then don't post anything that I, I had rules too of like, I'm not going to post anything that if I were to run for office, I would be embarrassed about. Mm. I'm not going to post anything that I wouldn't mind being on people magazine. Mm. So I just had that in the back of my head, you know? So like, even for that one drink of wine a year, that's not me, right? So I'm not going to take a picture of me even having a glass of wine because that doesn't represent me, mm. you know? You don't want um, it to come across as you're a drinker or that's something, right. but that's not you. That's right. And so, um, but like my me and my kid and Halloween, I don't care who sees me and my kid dressing up for Halloween. You could post that anywhere. If I was I've running, seen those pictures. Uh, I've seen yes. Them. So, and I try and only live my life doing things that if I were to run for some political position, which ironically would, I wouldn't, it's not my path, but that was the stake that I put. Wow. And um, so, and what I found by doing social media is it just great created this beautiful like friends that I will probably never meet, but I have created some of the most amazing relationships and these women have actually helped me to start this skincare business. Fascinating. So by the way, this is very valuable for an audience that doesn't really understand the journey. Yeah. How many years did you do that with no intention of selling something to someone? How many years did you just pick up the phone and be like, I want to be myself because I believe in the power of connections and relationships and just connecting with people. And this vehicle right here is a vehicle for me to connect with the world. I'm going to use it. How many years? until you created your brand, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Well, if I created uh, my skincare company in 2017, when did face when when did the first iPhone with a camera come out? Well, I think uh, we're looking at at least 14 years. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. So 2009, 2010. Yeah, 
Yeah. And you started, and, she started oh, communicating. I, right, right on it. You know, I, and I was one of the first Instagrammers, you know, but even though I'm not like huge on there, but I would get all of my friends to put their stuff on it. I was always the one to, to start someone up on their yeah. accounts. Well, I've been seeing you, my wife, uh, we go back years because obviously we, you know, we knew you for us, you have been always amazing. And all, for a lot of people also, we've always admired you in a big way before Gosh. I even met you. I'm melting. Yeah, no, so even going back, we lived in Texas from 2011, 2016. During that period, you were really active on social media. Mm -hmm. So I was in Texas and she would just show me your stuff. We were in bed and just, you know, as a lot of people do, browsing through the internet yeah. and going on Facebook and looking at stuff. And she would just show me your stuff all the time. Oh my God, look at Denise, what she's so doing. So you've just struck a chord in me, a little guilty chord, because um, I was a lot more um, active on it because I I didn't edit as much in mm. my head. And now I'm actually in, in the, like really since being with you guys, um, one of your, you know, the person who works with us is telling me certain things. And in my head, I'm like, well, I know that, I do that. And then I looked at, in the last couple of years, I've been so building this brand and there's, I, I've, I've slowed up a little bit because it's wrong to slow up, first of all. And I think, well, I, I shouldn't just show them how I make Brussels sprouts taste great because I'm selling skincare. But it's like, wait a minute, Denise, that's all part of your ethos, you know? And, um, and I, I do need to get back to being a little less careful and just outflow more. And that's really in the last few months, I've been kind of rehabilitating that part of me because that's the part that got my, my Facebook following when people weren't doing that. And then when I did decide to sell something, I didn't take out ads. I didn't do anything but just go on my personal. You had attention. Yep, I put my personal Facebook page. It wasn't a, it wasn't an actress page. It wasn't Denise the fan page. It was just my little private page. And I had 350 jars and I went, hey guys, I'm doing a thing here. And you sold out. Sold out in the weekend. Wow. You know? Wow. And that was because I just let people into my life for better or for worse. That was probably a big awakening for you suddenly. Like, oh. wait a second. What is this thing that I built now? Got a yeah. community of people that now would buy my stuff. Yep. How amazing is that? That's really cool because now you have something that we all need to be able to grow a business, which is attention. Without attention, you don't make it. That's, That's the reason right. why we have a company called Attention Grabbing Media because I really wanted to emphasize on the point of attention. Yeah. But your story is something that is very powerful and very important because people don't really understand. They start posting on social media mm -hmm. and the next month they quit and they said, I already tried it. It didn't work. Oof. And they got two likes and they're like, nobody cared about my communications. And you did it for so long and so consistently. And I'm talking about years. Yeah. So now you have a, a legacy. Now you have a brand that is stable. And now we're looking to scale it to a new level. That's right. But you have a certain stability that nobody's going to take it away now. Yeah. So and I didn't need any venture capitalist to get us to correct. selling a million dollars of skincare products. We bootstrapped this from our own in, um, attention that we got from this free thing called, you know, a phone and social media. This opportunity that the world presented, because that, that's what it is. It's an opportunity. Yeah. We can do something that doesn't require us to buy a massive contract on television or a television radio ad or newspapers or magazines because yeah. we have this thing. What you were able to do within your face was not possible 25 years ago yeah. unless you had capital. Yeah. That's the way it is. So it is yeah. an opportunity that people sometimes they they just ignore. Yeah. And that's a path. But but going back to I want to make sure that people understand the what it really takes to get there. And yeah. it's not like something that you can do for a week and then quit, yeah. do for a month and just quit. You got to do that. I like to uh, talk about three particular points okay. to create this, this okay. journey. Number one, people have to commit. So right. commit it with your message, right? right? You believe you have a message and you're yeah. going to do it. Whether that's Brussels sprouts, whether that you're going to talk about your cream or right. your beauty or yeah. what you're doing with your Botox or whatever that is, is commitment yeah. with who you are. Hey, let's not push the Botox. It's just once a year. Once a year, okay? <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is, but you're being yourself. You're being yeah. authentic, right? Yeah. That value, And let me say, the word, you say commit and I get a little, the, the, uh, the, the, the non-business person in me gets a little nervous and not that I'm afraid of commitment. I've been happily married. I have a little tattoo here for 34 years to the same 34 guy, years. 34 years. And he has such a crush on me still. I love that. You guys are amazing. You're oh, an example. 
I love it's just to have the right person on your team. It's delicious. So no commitment like that. I, I is not a problem. Uh, commit to doing um, branding has always been nervous to me, but I I I am learning these things in hindsight. I'm like, why did I keep pulling this camera up? Like even coming in here today, I see all of this beauty, and I'm and and it's like I'm like a junkie for wanting to share goodness. Like, I can't keep this for myself. You have this gorgeous facility that, that people should see, and, and that drives me to want to share it. And that's how it's been with, like, I go to a garage sale. I got this great table, and I'm going to paint this thing, and, and I'm, I want to share that. I'm not wow. going to just do it for myself. And that's been, that's what drives me to, um, when I get out of the shower and, I, and my face is all steamy, and I want women to know, if you just take the edge of your towel and rub your face with all the steam on it with nothing else, just the warmth. Now start rubbing, you'll start to exfoliate and your skin will be even more baby smooth. Literally, I'm like, I, I've done it. And I'm like, after I do something three times, I'm like, I have to share this. And so I grab the camera, I cover myself up and I, I do these silly things only because I know they're going to help somebody. Wow. So you, you have to, whatever the thing is you're doing, it doesn't matter if there's only two likes on it. You have to love it and be so excited about it. I literally took a video of my cat's bum today sitting on the chair next to me because it looked like a, a little, it just was so cute. It was a little black heart on his little br light brown body. <laughs> and it was so, and I start the video by saying the camera's on my face and I say, look, I, I'm going to share this. This is like what a crazy mother I am, even though it's my cat. It's going to be gone in 24 hours, this video, but look at this. And just driving here today, six people already said, oh my gosh, she's so cute. Oh my gosh. So if you find something cute or entertaining or helpful, other people will. And those two people that liked it, just trust me, you know, there's a thousand other people that liked it, but didn't press the like button. That is such a good point right there. Because we look at the likes and we forget that that's being distributed to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how many people I encounter consistently that tell me, oh my God, I've seen what you're doing. That's it's amazing. And you've never I've seen, never them seen interact. Never. ever. And they know yeah. everything that's happening in my life. Yeah. That is the most normal operating. Like if, yes. if you're a person that likes to engage with others and comment, just know that you are not the norm. You're, that's right. That's the right. The norm is people get those things in their feeds. Yeah. They watch it. Yeah. They click on it. They open it and they don't interact. That's right. That's the norm. Yep. As much as it, could, it would annoy you because you're like, but why aren't you engaging? Yeah. That's the reality. Yeah. So right? take that expectation off and just do whatever that activity is. Make that video, write that, that cute post because it's something you're drawn to do. Because if it's, if it's such hard, awful work, you will stop. You know, that's right. That's right. So what Denise has done, guys, is she's actually used social media to build an incredible brand and a brand that is actually producing millions of dollars a year at this point. Right. And it's growing and it's very, very valuable and a great brand that really she exemplifies with her own beauty and everything. And it's amazing. But without social media, this brand wouldn't be here. Oh, God. Social media is the path. That's why, you know, this is called the social marketing hour. What she's talking about is something that we all can actually execute on. No matter, no matter who you are and what you're doing, if you replicate her process, you will get there. Now, some people, here's the thing, there's a variable and it's called the human being, right? Mm -hmm. That human being is going to be different from person to person. She's comfortable in front of a camera. She has been for a very long time. Some of you guys might not feel that comfortable. Some of you guys might take longer to feel comfortable. And that's what part of the journey. You're yeah. only really competing against yourself. In her case, she spent several years just being herself because he, she felt that it would create an impact on somebody else's life. She was trying to educate people on something. She was trying to entertain people. She was trying to inspire people. One of those three things was happening or a combination of all three things occurring. There's another word that I like to use, which is edutaining people. Yes, right? good one. And she's really good at it. That's why she's an actress and she has gotten paid for films and shows and she's been doing this for a long time. And she's proud of it. Yes. And also know that like, I still, my hands still shake when I walk on a set. I mean, I was on you Young and Restless for a couple of years. Really? My hands would still shake. I, I did this film in Serbia and I still was nervous. Like I'm not nervous in the makeup room. I'm chatting with the, getting the hair and makeup done. And then I go on set and I'm like, okay, I don't want to mess this up. What, what if I sound too actory? You know, and like, oh, I have to cry on this one. What if the tears dry up because it was great in the rehearsal? And 
still, and I've made millions of dollars as an actress. Amazing. And so I do like when I speak with actors and other artists, I let them know, don't wait until you're not nervous anymore because that may never happen. Just lean into it and just know that half of these Academy Award winning actors who I've spoken to and had dinner with, they they all have that, you know, I guess there's a term for it now, the imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. You know, and, and that's like very old, that, that thought. So just know that you're in good company. You know, I, I'm also a photographer and I photograph, um, tons of thousands of people. And that actually started my email marketing mm. um, proficiency and really learning how important it is to send great emails wow. and to send them often. And I'd make about a hundred thousand a year as my side gig as a photographer. And I would send out, um, it was very um, not, not good of me, but only two or three a month, you know, but it was enough for what You're I was amazing. doing. I just did a whole session with some of my guys and oh, my yes. wife and the pictures are out of this world. Thank you. And and when I'm photographing someone, um, it, certainly like in the last 15 years, I've gotten very um, adamant with making sure the pictures are something that the person is excited about to want to promote their business. Totally. And so when I'm, I'm, I don't care about the ratio of the light and the right aperture, and it's got to be the right angle. And I just want a picture that when they look at it for the first time, especially women over 35, because we just look at a picture and go, oh, <laughs> you know, and, and with social media, you need to, if you, if you don't feel comfortable putting yourself on film, then, then you're, you're half, half done with being able to outflow your create. And so, um, that's, that's just a, a big part of what, what I do. That's my, my purpose when I photograph women, especially, and men is I want them to be confident that they want to just flood the internet with it. And that's one of my um, products is after I text some pictures, it's how long does it take till I get a Facebook notification on my computer that says, you've been tagged in a photo. I love it. Because they, they get it. so excited and they get a lot of attention. And, and that's all I want. I just want people to get attention so that they're willing to lean into, you know, their realtor business, their speaking business. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So we talked about the number one thing, because we're going back to the, the content okay, yes, formula, yes, right? So, yes. So number one is commitment. Yeah. you got to have that compromise with yourself, with yep. your message. you got to have that, you know you got something to share. Yes. So number two, you got to have the quality of the message. Yeah. Not the quality of your environment. It's not about that. Right. This is something that you can build onto, right? Like, I didn't do any of this stuff to begin with. Sure, I just sure. used my phone. Yeah. And I sold uh, millions of dollars of a course with a $20 Amazon green screen bed <laughs> yeah. sheet, uh -huh. true story. And I didn't have none of this fancy stuff that we have around, but I had a quality of a message. Yeah, I had a beginning, I had an end, and I knew that when somebody listened to that message, they could apply it and get better. Bam. That's it, quality yeah. of message. And the last one is quantity. So now going back to your conversation, yeah. in which you said you were doing this for a long period of time, and yeah. then you have lowered your quantity. Yeah we do need to get you back to higher quantity. Yeah. Because once you figure it out, what is your message and your commitment with that message? Yeah. And then once you figure out how do you get a message that has quality, right? As a beginning, has an end. Whenever somebody watches a video, they know that they can apply it to get better. Yeah. Now you got to work on quantity. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what it is, because we talked about how you can educate people, you can entertain them, you can inspire them. Yeah. And your stuff does all three of them <laughs> throughout your content spread yeah. out. So you got to work on the quantity yeah. because yeah. now there's, if, you, if Denise Duff was the driver, the catalyst for in your face, yeah. then we need to give the world more Denise Duff. It's just common sense. At some point, and here's the other thing about it, Denise is not going to be around forever because these bodies at some point will go away. Hell That's yeah. something that we do now, right? Yep. But you got to get to a point in which Denise did enough for the brand. That's right. That that legacy now becomes... Yes. A full solidified legacy. That's right. Perfect example is my father. So he created mm -hmm. content for a decade. He's not with us anymore. His body's not here anymore. Yeah. But now his content is still being seen by more people than he was being seen before he passed away. Yeah. The business is solid. Not only solid, it's growing. Yeah. It's been gone for 20 months already and it's still growing. So you want to get to a point that you created so much right. around you then now the continuity is still there. Sure, and that's sure. what you got to think about long term. That yeah. you want to leverage as much as possible. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you yeah. said that because when we first started, 
with the cream, my husband put on it, Denise Duff, in your face cream. And we let that roll for about seven months. And I, it gave me the willies. <laughs> You know, I kind of like the self bragging. I thing. didn't, I yeah. didn't, and I, I just, it's like I'm selling a thing, you know, and and to me there there was such a a difference, you know. I I had gone to um, Grant Cardone did his very first mastermind in 2017, and it, there were 2,000 people. Um, there were three women and 1,997 men, and. <gasps> God. Yeah. In fact, the line, <laughs> the lines for the men's room were like 20 minutes and there was nobody in the women's room. I was the only woman there. Easy in and out. Yep. And I'm very good friends with them. I, you know, was there when they had both of their children. They did, you know, home birth because I did home birth. And um, so, and I was sort of Elena's bodyguard, like literally that first thing. And I was hanging out with her and then people would come over and I'd be like, you know, so for the second event in 2018, she goes, Denise, I want you to come, but just know I now have a bodyguard. You don't have to be my bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, but at that event, that's when we got, um, I texted my husband. I said, okay, there's this guy, Russell Brunson. And I, I think maybe if we do this cream, that this might be something that can help us sell it, you know, because I'm not a business person. I'm, I'm an artist. I'm an actress. I'm a photographer, but I don't know, this kind of communicated to me. And that was sort of the start of it. And then we came home and then I had to think of a name, and um, because this formula was something I'd been using, giving to friends, and um, and everybody wanted me to sell it. And I'm like, no, I'm an actress, I'm a photographer. How do I? S I can't sell a thing. But then, you know, you you go, you get a little more educated, you get around sort of business thinkers, and um, and we got this funnel. And then I had to think, okay, what am I going to call this? And um, and I came up with a few names. And I was with this young branding branding guy who was about 27. And, um, and I said, what about this or that? He goes, those are too old fashioned. I mean, you're such an in your face kind of girl. And I went, oh, great. What am I going to call it? In your face cream. And he literally turned to his computer and wrote in block lettering in your face cream. And he turns it to me. And I was in LA at the time. My husband was in New York and I picked up the phone and I called my husband. I said, honey, is in your face cream available as like a web domain? And he paused and he paused and he went, nope, I just bought it for 18 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it, you know, and we just started with this one cream and then had to work on the jar and we just kept it. We improved the jar, but we just, we just started, you know, and, um, and I, you have to surround yourself with great people. You know, I totally. had moved from LA, which was very interesting because in LA I was very actress photographer and the idea of starting another company that was very entrepreneurial. And that wasn't, that wasn't my life there, but now we're living in Manhattan. We just wanted to change up our lives. It was a nutty, sell your house, you know, that you gave birth to your daughter in, say goodbye to your only child and move to Manhattan. Like who does that from LA in their fifties, you know, but we did it. And I found that changing our environment and, and being surrounded by people who think huge. It's a major part of it. Major part of it. So, but now we're here in Florida and, and it, it became an easier place to grow the company. We started it in right. Manhattan um, and we're able to grow it here. I remember your videos in your apartment. <sighs> you did quite a bit of those. I did. And some of those I remember Mike, your husband, which great guy, he's a good musician and he would be <sighs> in the background playing his guitar, yes. right? And that was awesome to watch. So yes. that was an extra bonus yes. element to watching well, your well, stuff. Well, we, be, because I'm such an idiot, because I wanted to always, I wasn't even selling anything, but I had to keep entertaining people. And I thought, we've got this beautiful apartment with this amazing view. Honey, I want you to sing me a song. And, and I, can I, can I go live on Facebook with it? And he kind of rolls his eyes. He's like, all right, hold on a second. <laughs> you know, it'll be like Composed some Almond Brothers song or, you know, whatever the new Republic or some cool song. And, um, and I would go live with it because again, he's going to serenade to me. It's freaking beautiful. I can't keep it to myself. And so we started calling it Serenade in the City, and we would do it once a week, and we did it for about a year and a half. And um, and then he started doing um, like marriage. We would do a little marriage tip beforehand, and then he would sing the song. And literally, like I don't sing, I don't play an instrument. I would do a little sh maracas or something, but just me looking at him longingly, like I didn't even realize that until people started saying, "Oh my gosh, I can't take my eyes off of how you look at your husband," mm. you know, and like that. That's actually what made him start wanting to do little marriage tips Wow! because that's another thing out there. Like when you have little gold inside of you, you can't keep it in, that's right. you know? And, um, yeah, so that was the, the, that's amazing. Yeah. There's a lot of people that need the advice for sure. You guys are an example. Yeah. 30 something 
years of marriage. Yeah. It's quite unique. Yeah. And still looking young because you see Denise on camera. You should see Mike also. Mike is still, he looks very young and he's still like he's yeah, a big, tall Mike guy. Yeah, trim, he's tall, six, six foot three. Six foot three, big guy. So Not as young. tall as Tom Brady, but he's, he's tall. <laughs> I know you're a big fan of Tom. Big fan. I know. Oh, by the way, yes. how the heck did, did you get, get a picture him? with him? I, I saw that picture, Denise. Yeah. I gotta know the story. Please tell us. I sure. still, I still got gotta get back to marketing subject. Yeah. I will get back to it. One of I our, gotta know this. One of our dearest friends is a top photographer named Mark Seliger, and Mark Seliger's in Manhattan, and he's one of the top photographers for Rolling Stone, Vanity Fair. Basically, he and Annie Leibovitz are like the go-to photographers of portraiture. So he and my husband have a band together called Rusty Truck, and they've been playing together for twenty-two years. Um, it's Mark's side gig, right? Like he's this amazing photographer, but he also is a musician. We've been buds forever. Um, they went to the, um, uh, Mark was asked to shoot the, uh, um, e the SB awards or whatever it's called mm -hmm. when, when Tom won the Super Bowl in 2018, um, against, um, the Falcons mm -hmm. in Houston. So he took greatest Super Bowl of all time. By greatest, the way. greatest. In fact, that's what I talked to Tom about when I met him. I, what I said to Tom because I had three hours before meeting him to think of what to say. I was so starstruck. How long after the Super Bowl was that? Um, well, it was it was in 2020, 2021, so, okay, 2021. Okay, so, so they were giving awards from something that was way before or something. No, no. Um, uh, um, so the the awards show was. In, in during the that Super Bowl, so that's so my husband. I kind mm. of jumped back, so my husband got to go see the game with our photographer friend because he knew what a fan my husband Amazing. was. Amazing, he was in that game. Right? He was at that game wow. and and wearing his shirt with all the Falcon fans going, "Dude, you're you're bumming, you're bumming." And my husband is like, "I'm not even concerned." <laughs> the, the beginning of the fourth quarter, where they had 0.9 percent chance of winning. And because in sports, everything is staticized, yeah, right? Every, this is the first Tuesday of, with a temperature of 78 that any linebacker has ever slipped, right? Like everything is Intense. statified, yeah. and, which is kind of sexy, right? Because numbers don't lie. Yeah. And so they had a 0.9% chance of winning at the beginning of the fourth quarter. And the Falcons had a 99.01 chance of winning. And so when I met Tom Brady last year, and it was just us in a parking lot because my photographer friend called us last year and he said, hey, I'm in town and I'm shooting Tom for the Brady brand, for his clothing line. And um, he said, you know, uh, I'd like, you know, you could probably come by. Let me just like check with all the COVID wow. protocol. It was last year. And so, uh, so he said, all right, meet me. Um, Tom's going to be leaving at seven. So come at like, you know, 630. So we drove into Tampa to the school that it was at. And, um, and he was literally just walking out to his car. He was literally, when you got there. Yeah. And so the photographer came out and we went into the parking lot with him. And, um, uh, and just, he just, he just looks you straight in the eye. And we just spoke, just me and my husband and Tom um, and the photographer for about 15 minutes. And the thing, the, the first thing I said to him. For 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, um, and the first thing I said to him is, um. Uh, I said, you know, when somebody feels that they can't succeed at something, I let them know that with a 0.9% chance, they could still win. And he went, that's right. And he fist bumped me. Ooh, oh, I'm my there. God. That's so awesome. A and, um, and, I, and I said, I have to tell you. You were talking um, about, obviously, he knew you were talking about the Falcons it. game. Yep, yeah. yep. I didn't want to get into, because they had just won the Super Bowl, like right. whatever, you know, seven months prior. And I didn't want to get into like, oh, when you threw the trophy on the, the parade. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Let, let everybody else talk about that. I wanted to. to to talk bigger picture. And, um, and I said, and I also wanted to tell you that for the last, you know, I said, I've been, we've been married for 32 years, but the last 20 years have been made even better because you have, you have inspired us to work as a team. And, um, and that just like, you know, I mean, of course it's a bummer now that, that his team is going through what it's going through, but you know, and he's personally going for what he's going through. That's right. Both, that's yeah. right. And um, but I know that that's really important to him, you know, and I wanted that was where that's where I wanted to flow power to that side of him that just really tries to do a little bit of everything along all the areas of his life. And I just didn't need to talk about the sports because he's got enough of that, you know, yeah. 
but but working as a as a team. Amazing. Anyway, it was it was magical. Well, I, I don't really uh, like the Tampa Bay Bucks. This is an unpopular opinion. That's okay. Because I'm in Tampa Bay. All that's right? okay. But that's because I'm a passionate Dallas Cowboys that's fan. That's exactly. That's what that I say me. to people. That's exactly. Yeah, I don't mind. Yes. I don't even mind if someone says I don't like Tom Brady. No, I, no. But but if they say I don't like Tom Brady because I come from this city and I'm a Green Bay, but but if you deny that he's a great player, that's when I go, okay, you don't yeah, yeah, look yeah. for yourself. Correct. You're yeah, listening so to. So it's, it's a very important, like, yeah. uh, this is a... Um, it's so, a judge of character so for me when I'm I very, meet someone. Totally. I, I've been very competitive my whole life. Like, I don't know how to lose really well. All right? So in my entire life, you're going to be... the me? hand here. No? I don't know, but I'm going to give you a run for your money. Okay, let's try. Okay. And I happen to be left-handed. You are right-handed, so you have, just for the camera purposes, all right? Ah, Denise, you're really strong. Okay, I am going to look very weak on camera. <laughs> okay, I, I already lifted. I kind of cheated because I lifted my elbow. She's strong, all right? Left-handed, though, I will crush you. Okay, okay. All right, I appreciate You want to try that. it left-handed? Okay, just, you know what, the only reason, the only reason I'm going to do it is because I feel like we, we need to work out that other side. We need to work it out. Yeah. And also, you got to make me look good, all right? We got to make it clear that I'm not right-handed. Look, and it's okay, I'm going to put my coffee mug here because I'm not going to win. So, I don't even, I'm not even worried that I'm, look at, this okay, is how much this. I trust this, that okay? I'm not going to win. I'm putting my mug there. Okay, no, you're not going to win. <laughs> Here's the thing, I'm very out of balance. My right hand has never been used for anything in my life. It's just hanging over here, okay? okay. I don't use the soap <laughs> with my right hand, okay? Everything has been in my left hand in my whole life. And do you write I'm lefty, you? dominated, left-handed. All the way. All the way, my whole life. So I played tennis since I was seven years old, obsessively. And I was one of the best players in my, actually was the best player in my little island of Puerto Rico. I was sponsored throughout the world, really? and I would have rackets, and I was a champion. I Did spent. You all know this about me? Yeah. So the first nine years of my life, I was obsessively playing tennis, day in, midday, nights, wow. and I was really good at it. I was a great yeah. big hope in the island of Puerto Rico. Wow. Yeah. We even had. Uh, I was. I was definitely either number one or number two every single year. And I, we used to travel to the United States and out of the world, and I would win everywhere I would go. Even in Puerto Rico, one time we, we went to something that they call the Zonals, and I, and I went to play in Nashville. In Puerto Rico, my yeah. little small island with two million people, we actually won. Every single other state was under us. So we were really good at that. Yeah. Until I got into trouble. So personally, other yeah. things started happening that then... I was lucky that I was getting, I got help from my church and I was yeah. able to get out of that, that trouble. But tennis was a big part of me. Wow. Because I, I use only my left hand in tennis, this hand is strong and this hand is weak, right? So that's me. Put your arms down, but just stay like that. You could see that's got more muscle. That goes up oh, yeah. a little more than that one. Yeah, it's a challenge because when I do bench pressing, for example, yeah. like, oh my yeah, God, yeah. Right? Oh yeah, you could see that muscle more yeah. than that one. Yeah, so I worked but it. But I, I, I like this I like this hand. This is the hand that I was able to almost win with. <laughs> she almost beat me. She almost did. You're really strong. Uh, so I'm very competitive. Going back to the Tom Brady conversation. Yes, okay? yes. So the Dallas Cowboys are my team. It's intense. Yeah. And it's good and it's bad because they haven't won in 27 years. Yeah. And, uh, but in my family, it's a big deal, uh, especially with my, my daughter, believe it or not. Aww. I have two boys, two girls. My daughter, 14 years old, it gets very intense. Well, they're an American institution, the Cowboys. Totally, I mean, you know? totally. It's painful. For example, yeah. we just went through one of the most painful losses last Sunday. We always lose against Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers from the Packers, he has our number. Yeah. He's had a terrible season. Yeah. He was three and six. I know. Five games in a row, he's lost. Yeah. We're supposed to dominate this game. But I always tell everybody, listen, there's something about this dude. It doesn't matter. We go back to the Des Bryant catch, no catch several years ago. And yeah. There's always a reason, and somehow he's going to get us. It happened again. We were winning 28 14 going into the fourth so, quarter. So it was that I was so rooting for Cal. Well, of course, Absolutely. we won. Yeah. But we lost again against a mediocre bad Rodgers yeah. team that nobody knows how to catch a ball in that game. Somehow everybody becomes a superstar. You know, everybody yeah. becomes like um, best receiver in the history. Jerry rises around yeah. him. Suddenly. And it's an interesting thing of, of, of the mental shift. It's like what mental shift happened 
with with Tom that they went from a 0.9% chance in the fourth quarter to to winning. Right. You know, like they Crazy. Did, they, they didn't go do more push-ups. They didn't, you know, they the physical thing did not change. They didn't go no. more to we're going to go back to football school and then we'll come like something up in here. Some mindset completely had to shift with the team all on the same page. It's like yeah. That's why I, I go crazy for Which football now. We talked about uh, the, the mentality, the mindset yes, before yes. we started the podcast and how important it is for winners. And yes. winners are winners in sports and business. Winners are winners. Yep. That's the reality. Uh, my wife and I, we love Tom Brady. We absolutely love him. We really do. We've always admired him. You know, one of my kids is a hater of Tom Brady. He talks he talks about the flake gate all the time. He talks about all these other things. And, you know, he's like, oh. This is one of your kids? One of my kids. I'm sorry, Denise. <laughs> I'm sorry. But didn't okay. you, haven't you shown him I, some I of I tried. The... I tried. Okay, listen, okay. listen. Who's tempting se- him? Seven rings, all right? Can you please tell me? Yeah. How can you prove that that's not legit? Right. Oh, that, that, that. It's like, I don't know who brains watch him all that. Right. I'm trying. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm getting him therapy. I'm doing everything that I can. Okay, good. Right? It's just For like him to truth. be able to analyze. I promise you that I'm working on it because okay. it's not logical. That's all it is. It's, it, the, it's yeah. not logical. In fact, I love that they kept him out of four games and he came back and... Totally. And he and doesn't he, boast about it. He, he just does it. He takes it personally. He's like, I'm going to go out and prove to the world who I am and what I'm all yes. about. Right. Yes. And, and he's he's for real. This guy is for real. And here here's the thing. I saw the documentary. My wife and I love that did documentary. You, did you watch that whole the, the t- whole t- thing? Ugh. So I, I watched the Tom versus Time one. Yeah. It came yeah, out on Facebook. Yeah. But I watched, watched the one. What was it called again? The, the, the man in the arena. Man in the arena. Man in the but, arena. But here's the thing. By so, Under Armour. But, but for real, all right? For you guys that are watching this this uh, episode right here, if you want to understand the mind of a winner, some of the biggest winners that this world has had, Michael Jordan is one of them. Tom Brady is another one of them. You can love him or hate him, right. but they have one thing in common, and it's that mindset, that winner's attitude, and also the accountability for their team. Yeah. They all have the same ruthless mentality. Some of the yeah. stories, for example, going back to the, uh, the the Last Dance, the Michael Jordan documentary. I don't know if you've seen it. That one I haven't, but now, but you've got to yeah, see it. I will Denise, now because be- it's also again, it's about winners, right? I was just a Tom so, person, but now right. I'm a sports girl. Okay, so you got to see that no, one. No. But here's the thing: whether you like sports or not, I, you need oh, yeah. to understand what it really takes to succeed in something. Well, that's what clicked with me. Correct. So when you watch the Michael Jordan documentary, you get to understand yeah. what one of the biggest winners, if not the greatest winners we've ever had. Michael yeah. Jordan is at the top of that entire winner group in yeah. this particular world. He doesn't know how to lose. He never lost in these championships. He went to the final six times. He won six championships. Yeah. This guy was very special. So they will show what his mindset was. For example, one that one time, his entire Chicago Bulls team, Yeah, they were all partying. And he walked into the, the hotel room and there was drugs and people smoking cigars and drinking and he just walked right out. Yeah, He was the first one to get to practice. There's a certain discipline and a yeah. mindset that the yeah. winners all have in common. Tom Brady is a team builder also. Yeah. The one thing that's incredible about Tom that it's very difficult to refute is the fact that he will make everybody else around him better. better. People will keep on getting injured and like in football, they say next man up, next man will come in. They keep on saying that Tom is done because his team is getting injured and he will keep on winning and winning and winning. There's something about a winner that yeah. really puts them above the game. Yeah. So what you've done, I think going back, segueing back to our conversation, mm-hmm. like I said earlier, uh, before we got started, we might have a six hour podcast. I'm just kidding, but we can talk for hours and hours, but going back to the subject of your brand. Yeah. In order for you to succeed as a business person, yeah. man or a woman, you got to be a winner. And yeah. that's the reason why most people are not successful in business because the winners are going to keep on going until they win. Yeah. The losers or the not quite winners are going to give up along the way. Right. And if there's something that you and I have learned over the years is that there's no such thing as failure that's in right. reality. The only thing that does exist is a lack of persistence. That's right. When people stop persisting on a path yep. at some point, that's where the loss comes in. But yep. other than that, it's just invented Completely. to explain or justify why you didn't make it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So going back to your journey, Denise, because I think uh, we should be wrapping up very soon. It's important to to talk about this particular process, right? Yeah. 
Something that stands out from what you've been through and your journey is that the first several years of you creating content and yeah. you grabbing your phone and just talking and you saying to Mike, Mike, I'm going to go live on Facebook and just communicating consistently, obsessively, yeah. nonstop. It was never for you about wanting to generate revenue or sell products. Mm -mm. It was never about that. No. So I that actually gives me like the willies, you know, right? like it's, that's not like, yeah. This is very important. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. I want to emphasize this point because a lot of yeah. people come to me and they say, how do I sell my products? Yeah. And, and I even, I have to say, I do have this thing that, um, I like to just speak to one person and, um, and that's, that became very real to me from doing commercials for many years where they always say, you know, you're whatever you're selling tampons. They always say, you're speaking to your girlfriends, you're selling yogurt, you're selling, you know, Triscuits. They always say, it's like, you're speaking to your girlfriend. So I got sort of this training in this, what they want to see on a commercial is like, you're speaking to your girlfriend. So when this thing came around and like Facebook had a thing of like going live, actually before Facebook, it was Periscope. Peri I, I remember Periscope. Yep. And I would go on Periscope. I still have people that- It's still Periscope, right? They're still around. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I haven't used it, yeah. but but no insult to them. I, you know, I don't, maybe you are around. Um, but I remembered one time we had the, uh, the you could do pull-ups in your hallway. And um, I had just done a backpacking trip. I do a backpacking trip with a friend of mine and we, we do crazy photo shoots and costumes. Again, because I want to do a trip. It's the two of us, but I want to create art that is fun for other people to see. So I wound up on Periscope doing pull-ups with the angel wings on. And, and that was in 2007, yeah, 2006, 2007. And, um, and still, I don't know how many years later that is. I still have people on Facebook messenger tell me, I remember meeting you on Periscope when you did that pull-up thing. And, um, Oh God, why did I even go that route of social media? Cause you're talking things? about your process for, you know, creating content and not about revenue. It's not about product revenue. It's not about sales. It was never an intention to, right. I'm going to do this content because I know that if I do this content, I'm going to be able to sell my products. Yes. That was not the intention to begin with. No. So what was your, what is the real intention? Because this is important, right? If you go back to the people that I help. Yeah. Dr. Berg. Yeah. What I did for my father for yeah. a decade. Uh, Nancy Cartwright, people that you're yes. familiar with, the boys of our Simpson, all these people that I get to work with, they have yeah. one thing in common. They are very interested in impacting people positively yeah. in actually helping them. That for yeah. them ah, is remember. more inspiring. Just the whole subject yes, of actually yes. helping somebody else. Yes. Yes. It's more inspiring. It's more motivating. Yes. Gives them more goosebumps than any check that could ever come in. Oh, 1000%. It's a common denominator across the board. Yeah. You want to hit, you want to go to bed and hit that pillow going, I, I helped someone today. Right. And, um, and, and the, the, the path I was going on before my 57 year old mind kind of went <laughs> is, um, the speaking to one person. And so when I hold this up, one thing, and this is, this is, you know, not to, to, um, I don't, it's not faulting anyone who does this. Cause I'm, I don't know, maybe it's me and three other people out of the millions that do that, um, are on this social media. I don't like to say hi guys. Um, because I, I don't feel that's personal for me. Right. And, and so when I go on and I'm going to tell you about this cream, I start, I hit live and then I go, Ooh, Hair looks weird there. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's see. Oh my God, my boobs look big. And my you're boobs, already live. I'm you're already, already live. live. I'm yeah. already live. And like, God, my boobs look a little big. Okay, they don't normally. All right. Well, hey, I'll roll with it. So, <laughs> oh yeah, that's 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 my cat's ass right there. Okay. So I wanted it. Like I just, I just start. I just bring my life into it. There, there isn't a separation. In fact, um, Alexandra, who works here, um, has watched some of my lives, and um, and she said you know, was it her or someone? Oh, maybe my workout buddy this morning. She's like, I, I loved watching your recent lives. And she's like, it's so great because you're no different, you know? And that was such a compliment. You know, I, I, not that I'm going for that. I didn't even think of it, but when someone says that that's what it is. And I like to let people know that you don't have to have years of acting and, and be freaking nervous. It's okay, but speak your message. Just get started on what you want to say. Like you would be telling your aunt who came over and wants to know about your business. You know, it's a one-on-one -on -one communication. It don't, it's not hundreds of thousands of people. And another thing is, um, 
uh, I'll do seminars for actors, right? I'll do these Zoom seminars and they're all over the world and helping them get started. And, and I'm like, guys, you need to use this because when I was starting out, we didn't, we couldn't make our own little mini movies as promotional tools to send out. We had right. to just hope we got hired by a company or hope that USC or UCLA had a student film that we could be in. And then we had to wait a year till we could get the film footage, you know, but now you can create stuff. And then some, sometimes like some of these young people will say, well, you know, I don't want to get like haters. And I'm like, oh, and it just made me think of 2006, seven, when Grant Cardone started doing, you know, started um, his, uh, was it Grant rant, mm. the Grant rant. And, um, and he would send these emails out and they were, I don't know if they were daily or weekly, um, but at the time that was kind of a lot, whatever it was, it was like maybe three times a week. And I went to his house one day for dinner and, um, and he talked about the haters. He was the first person I heard that word. The word haters. The word haters. Yeah. Around 2006. And he said, he goes, it's great. He goes, cause the, as those numbers go up, that means my lovers are going up too. And that just impinged with me. I'm like, oh, that's oh, a good point. Oh, that's right. Like, yeah. the, like there, because there's only going to be two to twenty percent of the haters. And so I tell these actors, please, like, I actually don't have enough haters, which Welcome means them. my reach is not big enough. That's right. You know. So when I get someone who sees one of my ads and goes. Um, you know, oh, they're using a celebrity. Their stuff isn't good. I'm like, yay. And of course I'll write and I'm like, by the way, I didn't pay that celebrity. She got given my cream and just on her own, you know, but I know what you mean, sister, you know? So I, I actually embrace the, the hate stuff, you know, because that just means your, your net is cast wide. And if it's not wide enough and it's just only lovey dovey, you're not, you're not big enough. And when, when he said that, like, I'm so glad because I hadn't really started this, journey of my, you know, as an actor, it's, you, you also get, you know, you, you, you get the hate mail, but it's, it's a slower way of getting it. I you love know? it. Yeah. The way that he said, I hadn't heard that before. If yeah. your haters are going up, your lovers are also going up. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. That's a very good point. Yeah. So you're not ha having people hating on you on your yeah. social media because it's a percentage. It's a per it just it's is. inevitable. It's a formula. Yep. And another uh, thing that I would like to mention about the haters is that I I'm I'm a very human guy in the sense that I get to understand people. Like I'm interested in people. I really oh, am. You are. So the the thing about the haters is that I actually feel sympathy for them. Totally. The opposite of like, oh my god, why are these people like assholes or like idiots or whatever? Yeah. Right. Instead of feeling like that, I feel like how miserable it must be yeah. for that person yeah. to stop doing what they're doing in their day, to go and hate on somebody yeah. else's create. Totally. It, like how unhappy they got must they be yeah. for them to be going through that? Yeah. I just feel sympathy. Yeah. And sometimes I respond to it. Yeah. But when I know that I want, I won't win, I'll just block it and get it out of the way. Totally. Sometimes you won't win. Sometimes, exactly. Sometimes I perceive that I can win. Yes. And I and I will get these people, and it yeah. happens to me all the time. Yeah, you can I will turn get them these around. people that send me messages and be like, "Listen, I was having a bad day, oh. and I'm so sorry about it. Yeah, I didn't really mean to communicate that. I took my comment down. It's, it's happened beautiful. to me countless times. Yeah, because these people are good. Yeah, just like there's and you two... paid it forward for them th to right. not do that again. It's amazing because yeah. now it sets a precedence for them, and they feel like yeah. maybe I, I actually am hurting other people, and I don't want to do that because yeah. here's the thing: we do know two to twenty percent of people are going to want to try to do something. That's right. But eighty percent of us don't have any intention to really That's hurt right. or damage. Yeah. So a lot of these guys are having yeah. a momentary. Like for a, for a day. Yeah, they need that control. Day. They need to, they need to make an effect. We all want to make an effect on the world. We all want to be heard. And and if it's an area that pushes a button in you for whatever reason, and certainly in skincare, we women have tons of buttons. We've been betrayed. We've been lied to. There's so much. And this is something that has actually been a, a point with my husband and I, because he'll read something and he's like, "What does she mean that you know?" The the it, the lavender she's allergic to lavender and she wants her money back and I'm like, she, but she could be but she wrote it in all caps with exclamation marks and I'm like you know what she is just like grant it to her like it's okay you know like th there's that difference of the um, understanding this world of skincare right or or this the 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 feminine world where he doesn't always understand that. And, and so when somebody says something of like $90 for a jar, that's crazy. And I'm like, oh, sister, I understand. I grew up, you know, with a single mom. I, I 
you know, but just so you know, this jar is going to last you six months, which is 50 cents a day. And I can guarantee you that your skin will be more hydrated. I'm not into taking people's money. I just like to, to, you know, and then, then they'll be like, and then you'll go off on the message, you know, and I'll take the time where sometimes my husband's just like, ah, ah, you know, but I, I see the compassion and Marketer. the loss. He's a marketer. He's yes. a business guy. Yeah. You're more the creative behind it. Yeah. The face of it. You know, you're the, the one that the build the brand. Right? Yeah. Like and the, the fact that they're writing that. something that they stopped, they, they're they already, they have a ruin in that area, right? right? And they're already a customer because they've stopped to write some, uh, you know. Now, if it's just a stupid or uh, like, you know, whatever, if the person in the ad like, oh, so someone's like, that lipstick is too dark for her. I'm like, uh. You know, whatever. There's just totally bored people. But the angry ones, I've really learned to embrace them. Number yeah. one, it puts my percentage of the haters to the lovers up. And um, and 60% of the time, they want to be a customer and they have some loss in that area of whatever your service is. Right. And you can be the hero to, to help them. Yeah, and it gives you an opportunity also to show up. Yeah. Because you get to respond to comments and yeah. people see you active. Oh. And that is something that really does flow power it, towards it the brand. It does. I... Yeah, there's a quote uh, that I use from, uh, he's a really good friend of mine, one of my original mentors, he's also a client of mine. Mm -hmm. Somebody that I consider to be the greatest marketer alive. And that says a lot coming from me that I'm so obsessed with the subject of marketing. Yeah. His name is Jason Flatland. Okay. And brilliant guy, I love him to death. He uh, has a quote that is very simple, it's a formula, and it says it's something that you apply all the time yourself with your own stuff in your journey. Value plus Sincerity mm. equals success. Simple as that. Oh, yeah. So when you're giving value on your content mm -hmm. and you're doing it in a sincere way, yeah. that's going to inevitably lead towards success. And that's a formula that really, really works. Yeah. Instead of just trying to sell yourself, you're just being yourself. Yeah. I like what you did on your content. Like you pick it up and you're like, oh my God, what's happening over here on my boobs or whatever. <laughs> like you're being sincere. Totally. You're being you, right? Yeah. And that's, that's a very powerful formula. A lot of us have a message to share, but we don't even don't want the haters or don't want to go through the process. Right, or right. Don't, and that's what makes a difference between yeah. you. Stop the editing. Stop the don't. Stop the, that's I, right. the, the I have to have this before I can do that. Stop that's thinking right. I have to have this before I can do that. Just do that. Absolutely. You know? Yep. So Denise, it's been amazing. Oh my goodness. Now, before we, we wrap it up, yes. just so we can give people, like, let's say- Oh, I thought you were going to do a game, like one of those. I'm going to throw <laughs> out a word and you have to- <laughs> I know we can talk about many things for many, many hours. We're going to yes. have to do this again. Okay. And we will, because I know you got many stories to tell. Okay. And I know you make people laugh and you told me about your dreams of being a comedian and all those things. So we, we got to do some kind of stand-up yeah. comedy or something with you. <gasps> But before we oh, do something like that, yes, yes, I'm actually gonna get you to. I'm gonna invite you to speak at one of our workshops over here. You know how oh, we do this yes. every few weeks. Yes, we gotta talk about that. Okay. So because you can teach people about this subject of being themselves yes. and talking to cameras. Yes, and I think that is so important. Yes, I've I've done that. I've had I have I've toured around and done that because try to get you booked. Yeah. It's, right. it's important and it's not, it's never about, you have to look pretty and you, it's, it's really my whole thing of, of hair, makeup, weight, all that. I don't, nobody has to have a six pack abs, you know, you just need to feel comfortable enough so that, that you don't, you, you're not repelled by yourself when you put yourself on camera. Right. You don't have to love how you look. Just don't be repelled just enough so that you can pick up that camera and record. So your message can get out there. I love it. I love it. So anybody that wants to start a brand. Yes from scratch, oh, they, want to, they want to go down that journey. When yeah. did you launch In Your Face? Um, 2017. Okay, so. Thanksgiving. Just so you guys know, she, had she, be, she built an incredible business, a great brand with a great product. She spent six, seven years creating content, not for selling the product, but just because she wanted to get yeah. attention and give people some inspiring, entertaining, educational content. She did that for a long time, but that paid off because when she actually launched the brand, yeah. she now had attention. Yeah. And that's the most valuable commodity. That's right. That's what we all need. That's right. It doesn't have to take you six or seven years. You don't have to go for that journey. Let's say that somebody wants to build their own supplement brand, their own skincare brand. They yeah. want to get started. Yeah. What are some tips? What is some advice that you can give people for them to actually get going? I know your subject is not marketing because you have a great husband for that. That happens to be a great marketer. Yeah, and yet here, you have us also. Totally. And, and here, you know, I had this... Um, 
the the term entrepreneur when it became very popular i had a, a, a was repulsed a bit by it. I, I I was afraid of it because I wasn't raised as an entrepreneur. I was actually always called a renaissance woman, right? Because I direct music videos and act and, and do all these other things. And it was just, oh, you're such a renaissance woman. I'm like, oh, okay. So then when I'm going to sell this cream, I thought, oh, you know, you're an entrepreneur. I'm like, yeah, but no, those are those business hustler guys. And then, but I just kind of kept, you know, you just push forward because you've got this purpose and you want to do something. And, um, you know, and my apartment is, my window is right across the street from Gary Vaynerchuk's office. So of course I'm consuming his content and I'm like, wow, I guess, and this is like 2017. And I realize, oh, an entrepreneur, um, is like an, is an artist as well. Like 100%. every, every actor, like I, so then I had to look up, I wanted to look up, okay, the definition of entrepreneur. And, and Oxford, it says, a person who organizes and operates a business taking on greater than normal financial risks in order to do so. I'm like, oh, an actor. There's no greater financial risk because you will probably not eat. You'll have, you know, I lived on rice and beans for quite a while. Of course, I'm in LA and the rice and beans are fantastic there. <laughs> um, but but you're, you take on financial risks if you're a musician, if you're a painter. But if you've ever, if you've made $100 as a painter, you're an entrepreneur because you took on a risk to buy paints and then to to put yourself out there. To what was it um, uh, Miriam Webster, one who organizes, manages, and assumes the risk of a business or enterprise? Right, risk is in both of them. Entrepreneur Shopify has a definition. An entrepreneur is someone who has an idea or who works to create a product or service that people will buy as well as an organization to support that effort. An entrepreneur takes on most of the risk and initiative for their new business and is often seen as a visionary or an innovator. Wow. Oh my gosh, it's, it's also an artist, right? Like you have this idea, you, have, you wanna sell this service at, for an artist, you know, it's, it's, it's their painting, it's their comedy, it's their acting ability, it's whatever that service is. And then you have an organization to support it. You have your agent, you have your accountant, wh whoever you've got to have just someone else to help you. And, um, but the, it says the entrepreneur takes on most of the risk mm. of the initiative of it. Well, of course artists do. So I looked at all this and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I, I, this is what I've been doing. Like oh, when interchangeable, right? It, it's Inter completely. An artist. And, and so um, I'm speaking at an event um, this coming weekend, and they they gave what my bio is, and the two other people, and and um, and they said, you know, Denise, actress, entrepreneur, and I wrote to them, and I said, I have a I have a causative aversion to the word entrepreneur because it's not specific enough. Because I feel that anyone that that works, it can be a risky thing, you know. Even if you're a parent, you know that there's an entrepreneurial effort in what you have to do to raise that child. There is financial risk involved. Right. You have a support team. You have your school that the kid goes to that you have to pay for probably. And so um, I said, I put me as an actress and the founder of a successful skincare company. Like specific, specific. I'm. I hate the vague thing because when it's vague. People can't hang a hat on anything. They don't know who you are. Right? It's and they, too general. Totally. I, uh, 20 years ago, my husband and I and another guy went to, to Russia to speak at a, at a fundraising event. And they called this guy, and Eric, and he's an entrepreneur. And that always stayed with me. I'm like, he's not an entrepreneur. He has a web design company. He's what? a founder of something. He's a founder of something. And right. why don't you want to to state that? There's and a particular product that he makes or a particular service that yeah. he does. There's an end product to what he does. So when I would go to of some sense. of these masterminds and people would say, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm like, like, like I'm left vacuous, you know, and I love specificness. And, and I think that's inspiring. And it, you know, almost comes back to the age thing of like, well, like I love, I'm inspired by specific things. So even if someone just says, I'm an artist, I'm like, oh, what's your art? Are you a painter? Are you a, you know, um, yeah, I really, I, I get inspired by a specific thing. And so I, I, I feel, and the reason I come back to this is that um, for me, because I can speak from my experiences, I was nervous about like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. That means I have to be these people that do blah, 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 and I got to wear a suit and a briefcase and I got to have my memo pad. And, and I associated all of that and, and you have to compromise and you give up all this stuff. And I'm like, but I still like to just do 
videos of me making cabbage, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. And then... I love it. So that, I just wanted to, to make that message that you're not, you, you don't take off any of, oh, look, I get a little emotional. Don't, don't not be you. Because even though I'm selling a thing, I'm still selling me. You know, like I have all these little skincare products. I probably, if I was smart, I should have brought some. Um, but we'll, we'll put them on the media for sure. <laughs> okay, see them, yeah. little cutaways. Yeah. Um, but you, you don't have to stop being that that sweet creative that you are to make to make a sweet living at at what you love at a service that you have or a product that you have. In fact, it is vital that you don't separate that part of you. That's powerful. I think the best way to succeed is by being yourself. That is the best path. I love it. Uh, Grant Cardone said a few weeks ago, actually, I was on a mastermind with him, very group, a uh, very select group of people. Yes. And he said, who am I? I am an artist pretending to be an entrepreneur. That's what it is, right? So it, it, I find it interesting because I'm like, what, why, why is he saying that? Because I realized then that I'm also an artist. Yeah. An artist is a person that's constantly that's creating. That's it. That's it. We have a vision and we're always developing that vision. And we're yep. always looking for ways to get attention. And yep. the artist needs attention. The entrepreneur needs attention. We all need attention because right. the attention is the driver for whatever it is, our end product. Yep. If we get attention, we can sell our products and services. If an artist gets, gets attention, an actress gets attention, yep. they'll get roles in movies and documentaries and shows yep. and whatever. Right. So at the end of the day, we all will benefit from the same thing. Yeah. So an entrepreneur, a businessman, it really is. The, the, if the individual becomes a really good artist, like he's going to be able to create a, create a great business. So I think yeah. in no small part, your ability to be creative, your ability to be a great artist has built an incredible successful brand on yeah, you. Yeah, they're, they're intertwined. It's just a semantics. Absolutely, 100%. Denise, it's been great to have <laughs> you on the show. I'm going to work on getting you booked for something more like amazing. Okay, right? because okay. I, because this is so valuable. Excellent. Uh, my goal is to help these people wake up and start getting yeah. into action, getting into motion, getting yeah. into action. No, I'm a big fan yeah. of, of examples because, uh, you know, I've had a lot of noise in my head I've had to overcome. And, and I, I like when I can give little specific stories, you know, whether it was, you know, when I was watching my daughter at her first lemonade stand at six years old, I'm like, oh, She's an entrepreneur. Cars are going by and she's going like this with her little hand as they go by, waving at them. She had a product, lemonade. It's such delicious lemonade. So she was excited. I want to sell this to people. Who was her team that she hired her mom and dad to put the signs? Like, we all have this in us. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> so if you guys want to check out Denise, you can check her out on social media because she walks the talk. And you're on social media. There I am. Right? D E N I C E. D E N I C E. A lot of people are going to spell Denise with S E, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my yeah. sister in law, ironically, Denise right. Duff. I'm Denise. Denise Duff has that. Denise. Denise. N I C E. So check her out on Instagram, on Facebook. We are pretty much helping her spread her message. Oh, yeah. And now we're going to help her scale her brand into a whole new level. So super exciting. So in your face cream.com. In your face skincare.com. In your in your face skincare.com. You guys want to check out what she's built and buy some of her amazing products. Denise, thank you for being here for being on the show today. Thank you, Manuel. This was delightful. We'll do it again. See you guys in the next show. <laughs>